Hey everyone, and welcome to Repurpose Live, where we help you to rethink your growth, your wellness, and your purpose. My name is Lissa Figgins, and it's my mission to help women to have the health, time, and resources to create a life that you love. And it's my intention to introduce you to amazing women who can also help you with that as well. So today I'm super excited to introduce you to Kathy Basil. Kathy is a transformation life coach who works with women who have lost their zest for life and helps them find their purpose and create a more joyful next chapter. Who doesn't want that, right? She lives out in Denver and embodies what vitality is all about in all areas of her life so that she can live agelessly. Anyone want that on your list of, uh, of uh, words about you? Uh, enjoying mountain biking, hiking, camping, skiing, and loving time with her dog named Kiefer, which I think is so fun. So Kathy, thanks so much for being with us today. Tell us a little bit more about your journey to where you are today and how are you serving women? Well, first, I'd like to thank you for the wonderful work that you're doing in the world. And actually, that's kind of key to my message, which is really plugging into a purpose bigger than ourselves. So mm -hmm. here you are spreading the good word about when we live our purpose, I believe our bodies are always listening to us. So when we're attuned to something bigger than ourselves, we don't have distractions about some of the smaller health issues. We've outgrown that. And here you are doing this, this wonderful service in the world. So thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. Thanks for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, gosh, I, I just want to go quickly through my story because we've got to, it's really the juicy part, but my journey started about 15 years ago. Um, I had just gotten challenged by a friend of mine to do my first triathlon and I got hooked because mm. the bodies are amazing. You just start running and, and eating properly, recognize that, wow, food is fuel. If I eat something, you know, kind of heavy one night, yeah, feel heavy in the morning. And so as you begin to do this, you hydrate and you understand that the essential um, contribution that rest is both sleeping and just taking rest in your day. Um, so I was really growing in so many ways about awareness around everything that goes into creating vitality and, and peak performance in many ways. About the same time, my mom, Shirley, she was 65. She was the pinup girl for living agelessly. So mm -hmm. she had um, golf and tennis every, you know, all the time. Great friends, great work. We lived in Naples, Florida. She commuted seven minutes to work. So it's just amazing. A <laughs> I know, I know it's gorgeous. And, you know, it was, it was the life, low stress, like everything you would want. And she had just gotten a clean bill of health through um, checkup at the doctors. Two weeks later, she stroked out. And oh, she wow. lost the left side of her body. And so it was fascinating because as I was learning what became what I teach now about the vitality code started happening in reverse for her because she mm. wasn't able to move. She was ha having to no more golf and tennis. Slowly, her friends fell away. She had to let go of everything that brought meaning to her life. So right. those, those outlets, the work she had to retire early from, mm. and her life was closing down. So as you stop moving, she started eating, you know, not preparing as good of foods and not drinking enough water. She started getting uh, repeated UTIs all at the same time as we're like, you go into the medical world and it's kind of like a full-time job going from specialist to specialist because you oh, have for sure. a brain doctor, you know, neurologist and the speech pathologist and you've got PT and you've got like all these things. And then you throw the urologist on top of it who um, prescribed increasingly stronger antibiotics. And so slowly over time, they killed her immune system. She was in the uh, hospital one time and got MRSA and passed away. Mm -hmm. So that lit a fire in my belly to understand, because I remember one time being in a doctor's office and this guy says, you know, here I am advocating for my mom, like, why are we here again? And he says, face it, your mom's got chronic disease. And I'm just like, hey, you, a hole. <laughs> right. I don't want to hear and that. There's but... no reason we should just give our uh, power away to a, a label like chronic disease. So in my mind, you kind of have that little chit chat of like, mm. it's not her body that's dying. It's her soul that's dying. Mm. And so I just went out on a rampage to understand how do we create not just health, like the absence of disease or, you know, these, you know, symptoms, how do we create true vitality? Because of just, you know, I think anybody listening to you understands that we've got within ourselves that our body wants to be healthy. Our body wants to be mm. here to express. And, you know, I just believe we're kind of like children of God. We're here to, <laughs> to mm. play and, and be healthy and well and, and joyful. And when we can 
calibrate all those things like honestly we we truly can have the health vitality we can reverse any kind of disease um, condition that pretty much I, I believe and I, I just got deeper and deeper in, into this study of that um, I created I went holistic health first and got got certified as, as a holistic health coach and I, I created a, a model that has nine different dimensions of health um, and then ultimately, I, yeah, I really got, got intrigued by that. What is underneath our behaviors? Because yeah. a lot of times, you know, food, by the way, can be medicine and there's so much to be done with food and, and, you know, how you hydrate and how you move. But a lot of people, we know what it is that we should be eating or, or what we shouldn't be eating. Right, and sometimes right. we still don't make the right choices. So what makes that gap between the knowing and the doing gap? So I that is exactly what I was saying yesterday. You must have been listening to my conversation. <laughs> yes, there is there is a gap there. It's still the whole of excuses, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of funny that way. And so here I'll show you my little my little vitality wheel. So this is what I got to is um, certainly like I said, there's so much you can do with with how you eat um, food. You know, the more live food we consume, the the more alive we're going to be and yes. how you drink, sleeping and resting. So resting is, uh, you know, we have the ebb and flow in life. And I believe that we've kind of lost that natural cycle to some extent, mm -hmm. um, how you move again, just, and it doesn't have to be certainly not triathlon. I can't do that anymore, but just simple movement throughout the day. It doesn't have to be exercise. That's got a big X at the beginning of it. And a lot right, of people are turned right. off by that, but just simple movement throughout the day. Then it continues on to how we think But And, mm. you know, you can probably think of those people who maybe are, are on the, the slide and what kind of attitudes that they have. So our ability to think and just trust our bodies, knowing that they have the ability to heal themselves, um, dialing into that positive channel of thought is uh, overrides so so much of this um yeah. then it goes into to feeling it and that's that's the emotions so uh, oftentimes i think most people this is one of my favorite missing links that i like to to dive in on because we just haven't been taught in a society to go in and extract some of those negative emotions so many of them lodged mm -hmm. before the age of 10 you know, our upbringing. And, and even if you didn't have a bad upbringing, so many of us are harboring um, just negative doubts, the unworthiness, the, the you know, am I lovable? Am I worthy? Am I deserving of good things? And those predominant thoughts are actually vibrations that our body is listening to and calibrating to all the time. So that's a, a great tip just for people right now, if they're having, um, you know, if the body's coming up with some big additions, ask yourself, dial in, what is the body trying to say to us? And what is the emotion underneath that, that if we extract it can allow the body to reharmonize to a vibration of vitality. Yeah. Um, and then we've got playing to me, connecting with other people. Have we learned mm. that lesson this year? Oh my goodness, past this past year. year? Yes. Right? Like we, I just was reading a post that somebody posted before we got on today about having that buffer for burnout, right? And she was talking about doing these little things with your kids or doing this little thing for yourself. And mm. they're not huge things, but yes, we've kind of forgotten how to play in our society, but especially in the past year with just things looking different um, and finding that time to do that. Oh my goodness. Tell yeah. us more about that. Well, just like you, you said, I, I believe that we we're taking ourselves a little too, too seriously all the time. And mm -hmm. so we've been on this very push, 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 like outer accomplishment kind of um, world. And I believe now we've got an opportunity. <laughs> this should be our, our wake up call to recognize the importance of play. So, yes. I mean, just look at somebody like Einstein and how the, the level of priority that they put when we allow ourselves to set aside the thinky, thinky part of our lives for a moment. And just as you said, it doesn't have to be that long, like go to the playground with the kids kids, um, run, run the dog in the, you know, wherever, <laughs> but it opens up a channel within us for creativity, yes, you know, allow yes. that brain, our brain cannot continue like an, on a nonstop push, push, push. And so mm. when you think in terms of hormones and stress hormones and cortisol, so much of the, the body actually calibrates with an, you know, like the, the inflammation and, and the, mm. the metabolic disorders that, that happen as a result of lack of play. So, you know, doctors should be prescribing play. <laughs> right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And those who are thinking holistically, like you are, who are really getting down to the root, 
you know, probably are addressing it, but the problem is that so often, and this is nothing against the medical community, because I think we often run to this first too, is we want to put a bandaid in everything, right? We want a medication that's going to take away the symptoms instead of asking the question that you're asking, what is the root issue here? What, what, what is out of balance in, in this wheel? And, you know, of course, if your wheel on your car is out of balance or your bicycle or whatever you have at home, it, your vehicle is not going to be, you know, it's going to roll, but it's going to, you know, be a little chunky and clunky as it goes and you're not going to have that ride. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I love sure. the message that you share so often is that it's not about perfection. What it is, is a wheel. And over time, just like you said, there's going to be times when maybe it's a little chunky, but other times we're looking for that ultimately over time, you know, so yes, um, yes. Gosh, I, I see women go on, on diets and they're beating themselves up because they were bad mm, <laughs> one right, day. Right. And it's like, well, <laughs> you're, you're on a journey and we're all on this journey. So a little bit of um, just allowance for ourselves and you know it really gets down to the core of it so a couple of the other dimensions on here that to me one of the biggest ones is passion and mm -hmm. again you and i are just so aligned when mm -hmm. everybody's got that one person that if you think of the word vitality like who is that one person that yeah, stands out right. that's so vibrantly alive in your life and chances are they've just got a sense of passion there's something and it doesn't have to be saving the world or you know you know saving whatever working with it, a certain charity, it just has to be a certain zest for life. And when we mm. can plug into what brings us fully alive, I mean, just listen to the words, you're fully alive. And when your, your heart and soul is on that level, the body is going to, to follow. And then the last um, on the outer wheel is presence. So I believe we need to mm. nurture that sense of peace within ourselves, especially as chaotic as it's been you know, this, this past year. And then I just think of the tree of life and as big as we are outside, we want to make sure that we're grounding with mm. simple and, you know, meditation or contemplation, maybe it's time in nature, but whatever it is that brings you presence might be your cup of coffee in the morning. It doesn't have to be grandiose or anything, but simple, simple, simple. The more you can simplify this, so it becomes your way of living rather than trying to create these big goals. But ultimately in the center of my wheel is self-love and mm. there i think is the true talking about the p under the under the mattress self-love mm. like if we are harboring those and, and i just kind of believe that we all are <laughs> a sense of i'm not lovable i'm not worthy um these are a colossal like collective issues that are coming up to be healed right now and the cool yeah, part it's, is it's so interesting because some of these things, you know, we may be experienced when we're in junior high or younger in life. And yet, you know, we're after 40 and we're still like, why am I still feeling insecure? Why do I walk into a room and want to hide? Why do I just want to sit at home, you know, and not go out and do and, and explore and try new things? Because like you said, all these, all these things that we've been telling ourselves and that we've believed over the years are still in there. Yeah. And so that's, what's coming out. Right. Yeah. And like you said, we've tried to, you know, push on through beyond that. And it's like, oh, wait, all we need to do is go back. And this doesn't have to be a big, you know, <laughs> unearthing process, but, but just to go back and sit with those underlying insecurities, the unworthiness mm. and where I've gravitated to is working with women as an empowerment coach to sit together. And I love small circles because when we witness for one another, it's like, oh, you know, I feel abandoned too. Yeah. And we're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's so empowering just to, gosh. And again, with this pandemic, I think all we need is to be seen, heard and understood. It's one of the yeah. biggest needs right now for one another. It's the biggest gift that you can give someone right now is to allow them to just, just be seen, let's bring their garbage up. And, and we do that for ourselves too. Mm -hmm. So the healing mm -hmm. process truly is nothing more than sitting with those old insecurities, allow those old feelings of how oh, I felt really abandoned or a lot of shame coming up. There's a lot of unworthiness, like I keep coming back to and just allow that to go back and, and consider where, where those first feelings of, of unworthiness or abandonment felt like, and, and just allow yourself to see that four-year-old child or whatever that mm -hmm. age was for you and, and ask, you know, what would that person need to be uh, to have in order to feel loved again and so much so much we can do for ourselves i believe consciousness is quickening 
and we're able to shed some of this stuff faster than ever. So right, right. Well, I like your whole idea. I liked your whole idea of being grounded because I think sometimes we rush off to this and this is going to fix this and I'm going to do this. And it's all the things in life is always like this and firmly planted is the name of my business because I truly believe that when we are firmly planting ourselves physically, as well as personally, then we're going to have the growth that comes, right? We're going to flourish even in the sea. You see the trees outside, you know, they go through series uh, or times of drought. They go through times of tons of rain. They go through storms. They go through all these things in their life cycle. And the ones that have the deep roots are still standing and are just beautiful and continue to grow. It's the ones that have really shallow roots or hardly any root system at all that when those things come, you know, they're the ones that get knocked down, right? Or they're hollow in the middle. And so they look like they've got it all together on the outside. But then when that tree comes down, you see that inside is completely empty. You know, you know that in the core, that wasn't healthy, even though it looked like it on the outside. So I love that you're kind of focusing on these, ex these external things and then also the internal things. And that picture is super helpful in, you know, like putting that together. So we could talk all day about this. And I know you love talking with women <laughs> about it, right? And me too. Like, I feel like we better take care of ourselves inside and out. We can better live out what God has called us to do, right? And so I love being able to just talk and work with other women like you who are doing, you know, things like that, but you've got your own way of doing it, which I absolutely love. And I think that's really fun. So I know you've got a really uh, fun gift that you want to offer our audience. So tell us a little bit about that. And then how can someone get in touch with you if they want to know more about what you're doing and what resources you have to offer? Yeah. So my website is called the vitality code.com with the word the in there and on there, okay, we'll put the link down in the comments. So that way you don't have to write it down. If you're doing something else right now, go ahead. Perfect. Perfect. And my giveaway there is called the bit, your big, bold, beautiful life planner. And so this is some, just some contemplative questions and a couple exercises to get you thinking about who you want to be. And so I kind of do like time travel, like become the person that, that you want to be and bring that energy back into the, the now. But when we begin to set our sights on how we want to show up in the world and then recognize some of the old patterns, and that's all it is, you know, we're not broken mm -hmm. women, we just are using some old broken patterns. So when you get a clear vision of where you want to go you start to recognize some of the patterns that we've been using that no longer serve you. And it just gets you to an amazing choice point that's super clear, like, does this work or does this not? We don't have to continue to judge ourselves as bad or shame ourselves, you know, we can just maybe empty the trash of some of those old broken patterns that don't serve us and begin to create nurturing um, on a daily basis. And it, it might be something as simple as breathing into, I love your vision of the tree, breathing into the roots of who we are, because truly the biggest liberation comes when we are so grounded in ourselves that um, we're willing to take on judgment from the rest of the world. There's always going to be people who have a different um, point of opinion. Your only job is to come here and shine, shine your beautiful, unique light like you. Exactly. I, I just, I, yeah, I just think you are the embodiment of, of that vitality that everybody's seeking. And they say that people who are going to discourage you from doing something usually are not doing very much and they don't want to see you grow beyond where you are. The people who are growing are the ones who are like, yes, come on, like, let's do this. I want to see you grow. I want to see you change. And I think that's the beauty of this is coming alongside each other and saying, you're not alone. I've struggled with this too. And here's let's, let's lock arms and let's move forward. And one of the things that I just was thinking about as you're talking about um, your journaling and, and really thinking about things, I think a lot of times, again, we don't stop to pause and really, and really see where we're at right now. And then think about where do I want to be? I think we just kind of let life keep happening to us. And then we wake up five years later and go, why am I in the same place? Or why am I even further backwards in this area than I wanted to be? And so being able to take the time and really focus on that, I think is, is really key. So I will also drop the link to something that I put together. It's called my reflect and resolve journal. And it's just a couple of quick questions to help people just reflect on where are you right now? And then resolve about where you want to go, right? Because once we know where we've been or where we are, that's great. But really the key is what are we going to do moving forward? And I think that's what you know, both of us are really wanting to help. So we'll put those links down in the comments. And if you want to get in touch or have a conversation with either of us, please send us an, uh, a message. We would love to talk more with you and help you really figure out what this looks like for you so that you can be joyful and living that, um, that vibrant life that you want to be, because that has a ripple effect right into every area of our lives, the people that we get to touch. So thank you, Kathy, so, so much for sharing with us today and for just pouring your heart. And thank you for taking something that was 
a very difficult time in your life and allowing it to repurpose you. You know, that's the theme that I keep coming back to with women is just on this journey, oftentimes we repurpose the experiences we've had and very often they are ones that are hurtful ones like what you've experienced, but you didn't sit there in that hurt, you turn that into a way to help others. And I think that is, that's such a beautiful thing. So thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I trust that this was an encouragement to you. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So when you grab the free resources, make sure that you leave those and let us know what you liked best and share this with someone else who might need to be encouraged and need these resources as well. So thanks everyone for joining us. And remember, keep rethinking your priorities so that you can create a life that you love too. All right, thanks, Kathy. All right, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.